everyone. You may have seen resin tumblers and wondered how to make them, and today we're gonna show you how. Resin tumblers are a super fun and super easy project and you end up with a beautiful result. You can use a variety of different techniques from marbling to glitter to alcohol ink designs and you can personalize them any way you like, but most of all, they breathe new life into an otherwise boring tumbler. Now you could start with something brand new like this one or you can give a facelift to a tumbler like this that may have seen better days. Now regardless of which tumbler you choose to use, it's always best to use a metal tumbler like this because the resin will adhere to metal best. Uh, if you do have a tumbler that has a bit of plastic on it, you can always spray paint it with uh, a spray paint that adheres to plastic. That's going to give some tooth for the resin to hang on to. And if your tumbler is like this one that has a silicone grip on it, always make sure that you peel back the silicone before you resin because as we know, epoxy resin doesn't stick to silicone. Now, no matter which technique you choose to use, an important thing to remember is only to resin the exterior of the tumbler. The reason being is that the maximum temperature that art resin can be exposed to is 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. And as we know, a freshly brewed cup of tea or coffee can easily exceed those temperatures. Now, on that note, an insulated tumbler is always your best bet because it's gonna help to keep the outside of your tumbler nice and cool. All right, so let's get to the fun part. How do we make a resin tumbler? Well, it involves the most unlikely of appliances, which is a chicken rotisserie for your barbecue. So I asked Jasmine to give me a hand putting it together. Take a look. Hey guys, so I'm here with Jasmine and she's gonna help me build our tumbler turner. Now, I have to give credit to one of our customers, Holly Mastella, who's got a fantastic YouTube page with a ton of different tutorials on how to make tumblers. One of her tutorials uh, showed how you can take a universal chicken rotisserie. Um, we use this one here, Charbroil from Lowe's, and she shows step-by-step uh, -step how you can create a tumbler turner using this rotisserie. So Jasmine is gonna help me assemble it. Yeah, so what did we do, Jasmine? So this rotisserie is meant to go on top of a barbecue and obviously we're not going to be putting it on the barbecue So I made this little stand for it So this is just a random piece of board that I had you can use anything and then this is a 2 by 4 That I just glued right on here. I glued on with wood glue So once we have our fake barbecue set up we come over here and these are the pieces that actually came with the rotisserie so this plate is supposed to be sitting on the barbecue like in the grills So I just glued it right down here and then this plate here is the part that actually is gonna hold the rotisserie stick. So then I just, it comes with these screws and I just screwed it together here. So then you have the one side of the rotisserie, which is ready to go. All right, so the next step is to attach this plate, which we're just gonna screw into this board here and then our rotisserie will be supported on both sides. So all you're gonna do to do that is you're gonna, you're gonna measure, you're gonna find the middle here and also make sure that it's level. I drilled in two pilot holes already, so now all we have to do is screw the plate on. Perfect. Take this. Take your screw. You go line it up, and then you're gonna ask your friend Joanne to just hold it right there. For sure. So when you're drilling in, just do it nice and easy. Don't uh, screw the first one in like too hard. Just kind of let it ease on there and then you can go back to it. And that just prevents the metal from getting all warped up. All right, so that's screwed on there. So this is screwed on so you can take your motor and just slide the motor on here. And then you can put this bushing onto your rotisserie rod. Put the rod into the motor. There you go. And then this bushing over here, you just slide into place. So you can just tighten this part off. And that's it. We'll see if it's level. Make sure your rotisserie is level. Great. Good job, nice. Jasmine's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Good. And then we'll plug this in. And turn it on. That was so easy. Let's get the uh, tumbler on. So what we're gonna do is grab just a standard um, coffee tumbler and we're using these foam footballs that I picked up at the dollar store and they are so handy because they fit really snugly inside the tumbler. So what you want to do, here, should we take this off? Mm -hmm. Just pull it out of this way. Okay, great. 
So uh, Jasmine took a blade and just made an X here and we're just gonna insert the rotisserie rod right into the football to the end. Okay, and then we're gonna insert it in the tumbler. put it back on the base. So what we're gonna do is turn the um, rotisserie on and as you apply the resin, it's gonna keep turning and it won't allow the resin to form and collect drips. Mm -hmm. So you get a nice even coating on your tumbler. Okay, so we are ready to resin. Yeah, so let's fun. get started. Okay, so let's get started. I've got my tumbler all ready to go here. Um, I taped it off and it's already been spray painted. I just wanna share a little handy tip for spray painting your tumblers. Uh, I took one of these foam footballs and I inserted it on the end of a paintbrush and that made it a really handy handle. And I was able to rotate as I sprayed to get nice even coverage. Uh, you don't need a lot of spray paint either, just a light coat. And then to let it dry, I left it on the stick and just grabbed this container full of rocks, inserted the paintbrush in, and that made a perfect drying um, device here for my tumbler. Okay, so this one is all dry. I did this yesterday. It's all dry, ready to go. I've got my um, art resin already measured and mixed and pre-portioned in these little cups. And I've got my resin tint here ready to go. I'm gonna do a red, white, and blue kind of ombre um, uh, design on this tumbler today. Okay, so let me just take this off and I'll insert the tumbler onto our device. So just take this out. Okay, and we want to make sure that the football is right down. Okay, and we'll put it back on. There. There we go. Okay, and you wanna make sure it's level. You can even grab your level if you want to, but this looks actually really good to me. Okay, so now we're ready to get started. So I'm gonna start with my pearl blue. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white to this because I actually wanted a sky blue, so I'm just gonna lighten this up a little bit. Now, it's super handy having these popsicle sticks on hand, not only for mixing, but also for applying uh, the resin to the tumbler. So these are great to have. Okay, so we'll do the pro blue. So we'll mix that in. Okay, so now on to our dark blue. Okay, so there's our dark blue. Next is our white. Okay. And we'll get our popsicle stick. Okay, and then finally uh, is our red. Oh, I love this red, it's so pretty. Perfect, so now we've got our red, white, and blue color palette, and now we're ready to resin our tumbler. So I'm just gonna turn this on, and the first color I'm gonna start with is the pearl blue. Now what you could do is, like I did with this tumbler that I made earlier, uh, for this kind of marbled effect, what I did was applied a clear coat of art resin first, just clear art resin, and then I drizzled on my tinted um, resin after that. And as it turned, um, the tinted resin kind of had a chance to blend in that clear art resin, and I ended up with this really marbled kind of look, which I really like. But for this tumbler, I'm gonna go for more of an ombre kind of look with stripes that kind of blend into each other. So to do that, I'm going to apply my tinted resin directly to my spray painted tumbler. Okay, so I'm just going to use my popsicle stick and apply the resin on. You could use your glove finger as well, but because I have a few colors here, I'm going to use the popsicle stick to spread it out. Now, as you can see, as I'm applying the resin, because I've taped already, I don't have to worry about the edges. After this is dry, I'll just peel the tape right off. So I'm just smoothing it out here with this popsicle stick and it is going to self-level as it turns. And always make sure you've got a um, piece of plastic underneath your work surface and that'll catch all the drips and you can just peel them off when they're cured the next day and you can reuse it again and again and again. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to our dark blue. And don't worry too much about drips because all those little drips are gonna end up blending into each other and it's gonna look beautiful. Again, to give you that kind of ombre look. Now we're gonna move on to white. Last, I'm gonna put the red on. I love this color palette. This is my favorite color palette. Light blue, dark blue, white, and red. It's kind of got a retro feel to it, which I like. So I'm just filling in the little gaps here with a little more white. I'm just gonna top up the other colors too. You can, you know, do as much or as little as you'd like here. You can add white in if you wanna have a little more marbling. I kind of like what it's doing on its own here. Just gonna add a little more dark blue up here. Okay, I think I'm done and I'm really happy with how this looks. Uh, as I said, if you want to, you could keep going. You could add a few white drizzles for more of a marbled effect. You could put glitter on it if you wanted to, um, but I'm quite happy with how this looks. So I am going to leave it. We'll leave it on the rotisserie and within 24 hours, it'll be dry to the touch, at which point you can remove the tape and um, it's going to look amazing. So we'll see how it looks tomorrow. Okay, so it's the day after and our tumbler has cured. I've removed the tape and I think it looks fantastic. My red, white, and blue tumbler. We even got a little bit of marbling here as it turned. I think it looks amazing. Now, if you want more of a marbling technique, you can easily achieve it. For this one here, I started off with a tumbler that was spray painted white. Then I applied a clear coat of art resin. Then I drizzled in my tinted resin. And as the tumbler turned, the tinted resin was able to move through the clear resin, creating this marbled look, which is really cool. And then finally, I just sprinkled on a little bit of glitter in there just to enhance the look. And I think this looks fantastic. Now, speaking of glitter, I also made a glitter tumbler. So what I did here was I started with a purple spray paint as my base, and then I painted on an acrylic paint that had glitter in it. Now you could very easily use a spray adhesive and um, sprinkle on loose glitter if you want to. I used a glitter paint for mine. And then once that had dried, then I applied a clear coat of art resin and it is so sparkly and beautiful. It looks great. And finally, the last tumbler I made was using alcohol ink. So I used sponges to apply alcohol ink onto a tumbler that I had spray painted white. First I applied a couple of different shades of green, then I applied blue, and then finally I embellished it with some gold alcohol ink, and then covered it with a clear coat of resin. And this tumbler looks absolutely beautiful. The gold just pops under the resin. And in fact, this one is my favorite tumbler out of all of them. So there you have it. No matter which technique you choose to use, you truly are only limited by your imagination. I hope this has inspired you to get creative, to have fun, and to make a resin tumbler of your own. 